So earlier this week, Eleanor Williams, a 22-year-old from Barrow in Furness, was sentenced to eight years in prison for essentially multiple false allegations of rape and sexual assault. Ella, I mean, you can tell us a little bit more about some of the details, but um, what was most striking was that she not only accused multiple men, she also made up the fact that she'd been a victim of an Asian grooming gang. Mm -hmm. She said she'd been kidnapped and raped. And she posted pictures on her Facebook of her being bloodied and bruised that she had actually caused herself. She bought a hammer and Mm. hit herself with it. Now, this is obviously a really extreme case, and she is clearly a very disturbed individual. But is there a broader lesson to take from this? Especially, you know, in the past couple of years, we've been we've we're always told that the lesson of Me Too is um, believe all women, mm-hmm. and in this case, that has led to a severe suffering on behalf of four men, two of them quite young, mm. um, one of them who was kept from his family after being um, on remand with the police for four months. Some of those men tried to take their own lives. They had rapists sprayed on their house. Um, actually, you know, the community in Barrow and Furness kind of went mad. You know, there were reports from, you know, in local newspapers about how just fraught the tension was between people um, that there were these kind of pop-up protests. You had the likes of Tommy Robinson turn up mm. with his uh, gang of merry kind of documentary makers trying to stir up some kind of, or, you know, talk to people about the idea of this, you know, he's obsessed with grooming gangs. And um, it interest, it sort of interestingly, a lot of this took place um, across the kind of uh, beginnings of the um, COVID pandemic. So she actually made the allegations in 2017 and onwards, but the sort of, that there were sort of two stages to it. There was her making the allegations. And then after in 2020, the police found that there wasn't any evidence mm that's when things almost started to get worse because it's sort of the just uh, Justice for Early campaign began, which was shared by Rachel Riley of Countdown, um, Holly Hagen, who's a reality TV sh- show a star, and Maggie Oliver, who was um, you know, a former um, police officer who was really involved in and did some very important work in revealing um, some of the failures in the police's rep- approach to the Rochdale grooming um, scan, gro- grooming gang scandal, for example. So basically, lots of people bought this. Yeah. It went really big on social media and it really screwed up a community. And the police seemed to have, um, uh, you know, acted in a way in which they did just believe her and put these men through some very, you know, from some very hard times. And, you know, no one uh, seems to want to talk about the fact that if you treat women like angels yeah. and if you say, no woman ever lies. And, you know, it's important to say that the vast majority of women who turn up with rape accusations are not lying. Yeah, and you know, this, this is, is, is this an extreme case? Yeah, it is an extreme case. But, you know, one person going to jail wrongly is a big, big deal. Yeah. That's a very big deal. That's a very big failure of justice. And if we believe in um, making the process of, you know, getting justice better, mm. both for, you know, victims of domestic abuse or women, but also people who have false allegations against them, we have to really cement our belief in the idea of innocent until proven guilty and due process and the proper stages of of an investigation. Um, And it seems to have really failed in this. I suppose you can say there's a current climate around, you know, there's a lot of distrust in the police and their response to the grooming gang scandal being scared of basically being called racist, of their sort of um, mishandling of lots of things that are going on at the moment in terms of pretty nasty views about women in the police, the whole Wayne Cousins affair with Sarah Everard. You know, this is not going to instill more trust in the police. Let's put it that way. Yeah. And Paul, do you think we have kind of fallen out of, um, not love, but do you think we, the idea of due process, do you think that's kind of fallen out of favour in recent times? It feels we're, we're very quick to jump the gun on, on a lot of accusations. Well, I, I always remember the case of Dave Jones, the Premier League football manager, about 20 years ago. He was the manager of Southampton at the time. Um, and after he retired as a player, because he was a professional player, and then there was a period where he was not involved in the game and he was working for... Um, working in care homes on Merseyside. And then he got back into the game and became a manager. Um, When he was a top manager in the Premier League, all of a sudden, a number of um, people who were formerly um, children in the care homes were now adults, um, made accusations against him of sexual abuse. And Dave Jones kind of suddenly turned into a non-person. He was suspended from his job um, 
and there was a long kind of police investigation and he was charged and it came to court. And the case absolutely collapsed when it Mm. got to court and it turned out that all of the alleged victims uh, had actually conspired um, to to blacken his name, to get a conviction against him um, for their own kind of nefarious reasons. And he walked free, um, and quite rightly, because he was an innocent man. But I remember at the time, and I'm I'm involved in football and I'm a a big football fan, I remember everybody saying at the time, well, no smoke without fire. You know, this guy must must be guilty. You would not get five, six, seven... Um, complainants, whatever it was at the time, um, you know, all kind of colluding. There must be something in it. And it turns out there was absolutely nothing in it. Um, and, and as I said, the case fell apart. And I think that always struck me at the time, and it always has done ever since, that no matter how compelling the evidence might seem against somebody, no matter how overwhelming um, the evidence might seem, might seem, until due process has taken place and until that person has had the right to put his or her defence in front of a court of law, you should never, ever, in any circumstances, assume that they are guilty. So the, the presumption of innocence is one of the foundation stones, I think, of our civilization. but it's a foundation stone that I do think is being slowly eroded. I think the default yeah. position now for many people is there's an allegation that's been made we must believe the complainant um, and we must accept that the complainant is telling the truth. And therefore, if we need to punish the alleged offender even before due process has taken place, then that's what we're going to do. The, the Tory MP recently, and forgive me, I can't remember his name, but he was accused of um, he was accused of inappropriate, inappropriate behaviour at the Tory conference towards the end of last year. Um, uh, you know, with with a with a young male in 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 a bar late one evening at conference. Um, and someone made a complaint about him, and he was sacked from the front bench by Liz Truss, I think was the PM at the time, for that short period. <laughs> um, and he was sacked from the front bench and immediately said, I'm not guilty of this. And it turns out that the person he was with had completely consented to the, the behaviour. Um, but by then, by the time a few months later that it was found he hadn't done anything wrong, frankly, his front bench career and reputation had been destroyed. Yeah. And I think that's the, the kind of thing that we need to be really careful of. And, you know, the... the when, when Her Majesty's um, Inspectorate of Constabulary said, and it's on the record in 2014, a, a victim, when it comes to complaints about sexual abuse and so on, the, the, the presumption that the victim should be believed should be institutionalised. That, that's what yeah. the inspectorate said. I think it created a whole raft of problems because I think from that, and we saw that with the Carl Beach affair and, and yeah. other sorts of affairs yeah. where the police just instinctively say, you will be believed. Now, I think that's entirely the wrong approach. The police have got to be impartial. The, yes, absolutely, the police should investigate and investigate with compassion and sensitivity where someone makes serious allegations of, of sexual abuse. But actually, you don't automatically believe the complainant. You see where the evidence takes you. If there's a case to answer, it goes before the court and we let a jury decide. And it seems to me that actually those those were principles that once upon a time, the vast majority of this country believed, but now seem to be slipping away from us. And I always say to people, look, it's fine until you're the person who's been accused. When you're when you're the person who's been accused, you might suddenly find how important the presumption of innocence is, how important due process is, how important the right to put your defence and have a fair hearing is. Um, and we need to we need to push back on it because I think it is a serious, serious threat. 